This song is awful. I hate it. I hate it. What is this country? Hey guys, it's your girl Laisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Agatha All Along. We're now on to episode four of season one, which is called If I Can't Reach You, Let My Song Teach You. So last episode was super fun up until the end where we apparently lost Mrs. Hart. So now the coven is incomplete. Now, I, we all know that Mrs. Mrs. Hart was not supposed to be the real coven or the person who was supposed to be the fourth member. So I don't know if somehow Rio is going to make a reappearance or how that's possible. But still, this does change the dynamic and it definitely made it very real to the ladies in this situation that the road is serious business and they need to make sure they're on their toes. So I'm excited to continue and see what the next trial is. We know the potions trial is now done, a.k.a. Jen, I'm wondering who's next and I'm ready for it. So let's jump in. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to know when I drop these episodes, you can hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be in the know. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. I didn't think you had it in you. Oh. For all we know, her mother died on the road too. My mom did die on the road. Oh, we're not whispering quietly enough. She died on tour. Hotel fire. Oh. If you're not trying to find her out here, why did you come with us? To break the curse. She said the road would save me. Hmm. R.I.P. Mrs. Hart. The way she's pretending to care. Shall we? <laughs> I love how she always swings her jacket. Of course the road killed her. More power for the rest of us. Setting aside yours. Staggering callousness. <laughs> we still have the issue of our incomplete coven. Initiate the team. Coven two. That doesn't make any sense. It does if you're a student of the ballad. Her mother recorded the most popular version of the ballad. I'm like, you have a ballad expert right there. That's probably not a good call to go in with Agatha. How many witches left the road with you last time? Here we go. How many doses of the antidote did she get? Potions, witch. This is your fault. Okay. Oh. Well. Wow. <laughs> We're in the same place. I wish we could go home. Now? I thought you wanted to have fun. We Weren't you the one saying let's not kill the fun last episode? What if we summon a backup green witch? So that's how it happens. Okay. There is so much that could go wrong. So much has already gone wrong. Facts. We're not really supposed to be down here. Let's be real. Anybody got a spell book? Ah. The way she knew he had his little notebook. Infra. Intra. Okay, extra. that's an interesting stick figure. May she be smart and not annoying. I feel like that's a good, good stipulation. Super political. <laughs> May she be pleasant looking. Okay, that's important. True witchcraft takes time. Does it? The spell must marinate. Jesting. Jesting. I had a feeling it wasn't gonna be that long. Turn Mrs. Hart into a zombie. She has to be cast. Right, I didn't bring my bifocals. Hey, Rio. Heard you guys were having a party. Hey, at least she's chill. A green witch? Um, uh, less a green witch, more the green witch. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah, right this far. Yeah. Wow, the way they're all like, no, no idea what to do with her. <laughs> Not the oh. all the yellow brick road oh, dance. Cool. I can't. So what do we think? Can we trust her? I mean, I don't think you have much of a choice at this point, do you? Do I hate her or do I want her phone number? Same. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh, hello. Hey. hey. I can't. They're high schoolers. Not another house. Can we do these trials in like open fields with lots and lots of sunlight? Here we go again. <laughs> yeah. What's the plan, Alice? Go back, go around, go anywhere but in that house. It's going to be everywhere you turn, right? I agree, but the road clearly does not. Yeah, this is magical, hun. The trials must be taken, remember? Guess it's her trial up next. Does that look like firelight in there? And she said her mom died in a fire. Oh, the phases of the moon again. Where are we at now, kiddo? 
Waxing moon. The fire phase. Fire. Okay, water was the first one. Fire. Okay. Red hair and fire witch. Got it. Okay, fit change. Hair change. 70s was a great era. I don't know. Feels like there's a story there. Oh, check me out. <laughs> of course she's like, I'm loving it. The road isn't subtle. What happens next? Right. A test. She looks like Liza Minnelli. That's hilarious. Maybe there is like a, a, a riddle or a kickoff for this one too. Ooh, points for the kid. I want Rio to ask him his name because I wonder, there's been theories that she's the one who put the sigil on him and I'm wondering if that's true. So much to unpack there. Move away, sis. Listen to your gut, move away. What do we got here? Did I see the Bee Gees? Mamas and Papas? Oh, there's her mom. She was trying to open the road, wasn't she? With her concerts. Her fans were her coven. Okay, that's a creative idea. Which is it? Am I wispy or am I kooky? Uh, she didn't say that. Alice! Alice, don't. Don't what? Is that her mom? She channeling Pardon? her mom? Don't what? Don't what what? Her power is so frustrating. So frustrating. I need her to get it fixed. She said, save Agatha first, and now this. Or protect Ad Agatha, and now don't do it, Alice. Don't do what? Do this? It's too late for that now. They gotta finish the trial, right? How's the quest for power going? God, this woman's a stalker. What is your problem? Why did you bring that boy? Oh, many hands. Light work. What if we just... Call it truce. Right, at least while you're on the road. I get the pleasure of watching you do what you do best. Which is kill all the witches around you. Oh, that was not what you expected her to say, huh? You get your power. And I get my bodies. Bodies. That's my coven you're talking about. I'm not that kind of witch anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought it was a clue. What made you think that? I don't know. You think he even knows what vinyl is? This song is awful. I hate it. I hate it. What is this country? We've been cursed. Oh. Again? Why are you smiling? She's a tourist. She's a psycho. You love it. See? You love it. Maybe this curse isn't so bad. Really, son? Ask Mrs. Hart about that. Why is she on fire? Oh, right, Fire Witch. Okay. She took care of that pretty fast. Good job. I'm gonna need you to draw one of those circles around me. Right, exactly. Some preemptive care, please. This hair is very flammable. The only way to end a curse is to face it. Fire Witch. She asked for a circle, and this is what happens when you don't listen. Didn't she ask? Preemptive care. Quick, quick now. My good sis doesn't deserve this. Oh, I'm sorry. Her shoulders. Oh, no. Her beautiful skin. You will pay for this. Do I have one, too? We don't know. You got a fur coat on. Yes. Can you draw circles around other people already? Why are we waiting? I mean, we don't know it's going to continue, but come on. The curse. <laughs> the way she's reading a paper. <laughs> Rio. <laughs> Mood. <gasps> the song. I couldn't save her. <gasps> and her mom was a fire witch and died in a hotel fire. Hmm. I convinced myself they were birthmarks. Your mom did that? Even though she had the same ones. Oh, well, she was right about them being oh, cursed. Are talking about a generational curse? Oh, you poor thing. Poor us. <laughs> now we have our family's old ass curse. <laughs> She's like, I'm already black. I have enough burdens to bear. Ah! Shouldn't he be okay, though? 
Agatha, the first one to run again. She definitely cares about this kid. Got attacked by the curse. And she's holding her heart. So what, you live in that circle now? Ah, uh, yeah, have you had your whole skin seared off? I would stay there too. I'm not playing that song. All signs point to a jam session. What good will it do? The ballad First. opens the road. Reverse the curse? That's because at any given moment, somewhere, someone is playing that song that you hate so much. The song's a protection. Lorna's ballad is a protection hmm, spell. That's even more heartbreaking. And maybe now it can protect us. Maybe you might want to hurry up with the protection part. Jen, you're on base. I'm still in the circle. Jen! <laughs> well, what do you know? Zills. I'm Jen. Play it right, play it well, and maybe we won't die. No pressure. Performance of a lifetime, quite literally. Was Rio just gonna sit there and do nothing? <laughs> Not for prepping. Yeah, she's she's old enough to have experienced pain a few times. She can handle it. Our love was oh, she's the drums. <laughs> of course, thank you. To risk this heart of Where is this breeze coming from? <laughs> I love that they're using this song and remixing it within the same show. That is amazing. Okay, fire witch indeed. Oh, great fire! Just keep singing. Keep singing. At least it's contained. Of Oh, never mind. I was saying contained, but the one behind her, not so much. I thought he got hit with glass. Keep going. For now, I'm sorry. Don't pass out yet, okay? Don't lose tempo! Focus! I was getting so into it. She forgot that, like, everything's going up. I mean, this is the hottest stage ever. Sorry. Sorry. I'll see myself out. Okay, here we go. There we go. Sing it like you mean it, Alice. Ooh, yes, maracas. I prefer that over the triangle, truthfully. Shake it. Uh, you're not part of the band. Stay up there, please. I can see it. I can kill it. With my killer notes. Oh, oh, that she killed it. No, it's just transparent. Oh, that's the marking. Keep going. That was great imagery. That was great. Oh, the metronome stopped. Good job. Good job. You got that monkey off your back, quite literally, sis. Now you're not cursed anymore. Oh. Is that how we get out? The exit. Oh, that doesn't look really it. nice. Yay. He's bleeding out, guys. What's wrong with him? He's bleeding. We've got to get him out of here. Oh, this convenient yeah. stump. Uh, Hold on. There's so I, got, I, got I, was say, I don't think you're supposed to remove it until you have a way to close it. He's young. He's strong. Don't! Ooh. Agatha's genuinely upset for the first time. Don't. Jen! Uh, uh, water and moonlight. Oh, okay. I feel like there's moonlight everywhere, so we got that. So Rio can heal him, could she not? We know she, well, I mean, licking that would be gross, but she has the power to heal. Why not? Why did she tell her not to do it? Kurabe. Three of swords. Wilderness, Abakwa, Kurabe. I think they're making it worse. Wait, wait, they're making wait, it worse. Wait, wait. Give it a minute, Agatha. Jeez, you've been only been a witch for like a billion years. Good job, Potions Witch. Jen for the win two times in a row. Look what you did. You did that, Jen. Queen Tings, High Priestess indeed. Thank you, Jen. But Rio now knows that the boy means something to her, and that is probably not good. But I'm still not sure whether or not some people have hypothesized that Rio sent him or knows who he is, but we'll see. Either way, she now knows there's a way to get to Agatha. Yeah, I think she does. She definitely thinks this is her kid. Or at least she wishes it was her kid. And midwife. A midwife? 
How are you bound? I was invited to the brand new Obstetrics Association of Greater Boston. The man who was drowning her. It was a trap. I still don't know how he did it. Part of me hoped that the road wasn't real so I could stay angry. It's easier than hurting. It was all for you. Hmm. And that makes you sad. That, yeah, that sucks. We've all got an extra nipple. You guys don't have extra nipples? I'm covered in nipples. <laughs> you wanna see? It's okay, you can keep that to yourself. Agatha is truly shaken, this is crazy. Truly shaken. Did you put the sigil on me? No. Actually, I wouldn't know. That's true. A sigil works on the witch who cast it as well. That's why we don't use them as much. They're super irritating. Oh, good piece of info. Sigils are destroyed, not lifted. Oh, damn. Rest of your life, huh? The answer is when they're no longer needed. So he was sent to her for a reason. You don't have to know a person's name to know who they are. Ooh, touching. What really happened to your son? Wow, we're just jumping right over that, huh? It's a bit much. Heal fast. We're not staying here long. I was like, that's that's a bit of a leap, son. Just because she, he cared about the fact that you didn't die. What might be the most traumatic moment of her life? We're not ready to really talk about that sober, you know? But now, huh? <laughs> Lilia! <laughs> Where do you go? <laughs> that is a good question. I want to know what's going on with Aaliyah. Knitting needle to the elbow. Ugh. You ever hear of the Daughters of Liberty? Uh-uh. No. Exactly. Ooh, <laughs> damn. Oh, Agatha does not want to bond. I loved someone, and I had to do something that I did not want to do, even though it was my job. She keeps looking at Agatha. And it hurt them. She is my scar. Interesting. And poetic. <laughs> I'm gonna stretch my leg. <laughs> okay, that was like the least inconspicuous. I hurt someone. <laughs> Don't think for a second I've forgotten what you said in the sound bus. Okay, so she hurt Agatha because it was her job? And Agatha never forgave her? This relationship is very confusing. That boy isn't yours. You know who he is? Hmm. I think she told you that because she actually cares about you. But I think we're going to let Agatha have it, you know? Hmm. Just let her pretend. It's giving her something to care about for a while, you know? Other than herself. Like Loki, these have crazy long credits, so I'm always worried that there's an ending scene that I've missed, but it does not look like it. Okay. All right, guys, that was episode four, and I feel like this one had a different pace definitely from the last one. The musical theme is still there, and I do like that. I, I, I have no doubt there's probably gonna be some people who are gonna be a little bit like another song, but I like it. Like, I'm someone who's used to, I mean, I know this is Marvel, but this is also Disney, and Disney used to pump out a lot of musicals back in the day, and I like a good musical here and there. And it's not like a true musical where like they're breaking into song randomly all the time, but I do love how the song of the Witch's Road is being used continuously and creatively throughout the series. I just think it's really fun, and it gives the show a really nice baseline to follow, at least during this season. Again, I don't know if they plan on doing multiple seasons, of this show but for this season I like that it's giving us a lovely trail to follow and also a wonderful storyline so so this episode was the trial of the fire witch aka Alice and we saw that as soon as she saw this cabin she immediately knew it was for her and she didn't want to do it so my guess is that was someplace that she had to live or was living with her mom at some point. And she immediately knew that it was gonna be something about her past, which we already know causes her a lot of pain. But I think there were some really interesting things that came out of this episode regarding that. One, which is that Alice knew her mother was already gone. She was letting the world believe that she'd gone down the witch's road when really she already knew that her mother died in a fire 
on tour, which I'm assuming she must have kept quiet because I would assume that would have been public knowledge. So why that was covered up and why she never told anyone is interesting. Or maybe it was because she just wanted to have everyone to believe that her mother had actually made it to the witch's road since that she that's what she sung about. That's what she was famous about or famous for. But I mean, there was a curse. And now I was about to say, like, if they're fire witches, then how would a fire witch die in a fire? But now seeing what the curse looks like, I see it now, right? The curse has flames built into it. So I guess her mom, her mom died of it first. And then Alice's mother, I meant Alice's grandmother, sorry. <laughs> Alice's grandmother died first. And then her mother knew that the curse would come to her next. And so that's why she was saying that she has to do what she can to protect Alice because she knew it was going to come for her too. But it just kind of brings more light to how sad Alice's life was like, I said it in the last episode when she had the flashback and her mom was sitting there just miserable drinking because she knew that this burden was on her. And of course, Alice didn't want to believe it. But the reason Alice could even think it wasn't true was because her mom had done so much to protect her. And finding out that this song that she kind of hated because she was like, why does mom keep singing this song? Like, why does she keep using it? It's not working. It's, it never opened the witch's road. So clearly she's crazy. But she wasn't because it actually did work. It was actually a protection spell that kept the curse from moving from her to her daughter. And I think her biggest fear, and she was so smart because recording the song and having it be something that would live in perpetuity after she died was the perfect way to continue having the song play for Alice, ideally likely her whole life, right? So hearing like what Agatha said, where she was like, oh, you know, you should be burnt to a crisp by now, but you're still here. Like you're in your thirties and you're still here and no one else in your family's made it that long. So your mom's protection spell, the fact that this song you hate, the fact that people are singing it and playing it, it's protecting you. It has protected you thus far. So that was just really touching and sad at the same time. But the good thing is that now that she is in the witch's road, she now has the power to break it, which she did. We saw she finally was able to see the curse, and really interesting that the curse on her shoulders were the talons of this curse literally touching her and how unfortunately now, I'm wondering if they'll go away now, but Lilia and Jen both got burned. I'm hoping that they don't stay, <laughs> which is sorry, this reminds me, I was <laughs> cackling at Jen being like, can you drive that circle around me expeditiously, please? <laughs> like, <laughs> when she saw what happened to Lilia, she's like, hurry up, hurry up. And then she did it and she got burned anyway. I'm like, mm, this is feeling very personal. Why would you do that to my girl? Anyways, um, but yeah, so I thought that was really touching. And I do like the way Alice's story kind of came full circle. The fact that she got to be the one to break that curse that's been with her family for God knows how long. I mean, me, I'm the kind of girl, I love stories. So I mean, I would have loved to find out like who put the curse on there? Why was the curse put there? How long has it been going? How did they deal with it in the past? Could they deal with it in the past? Was it only the daughters or did all the kids get it? So many questions, but we're probably not gonna touch on all that in this show, but you see where the, the fodder for more storytelling is there. But yeah, so that's basically Alice's trial done. I'd say she aced it to be perfectly honest. And I really love the whole 70s garb and the, and the band. I thought that was really funny, especially Lilia with her, her triangle first and then, or the little mini bell. I can't remember what she called it. And then the maracas, that just made me laugh. Uh, outside of that, yes, we had to bring Rio into the equation. And I knew she'd show up at some point because you don't show her in the episode, episode one, the way that you did. And then, and two for that matter. And then have her name on the list of witches that are supposed to be part of the coven unless she's going to be part of it. Plus it's Aub Aubrey Plaza, right? We're not going to only have her for one episode. So they summon a witch because we see that the rest of like Agatha is perfectly fine with trying to continue down the road without an earth witch, but they're like, nah, like we already saw the consequences of not doing things according to the way we're supposed to. Mrs. Hart paid the price. We're not making any more mistakes. We're summoning another witch. So they did. And of course it was Rio because she is the closest, but I think it's because also she was the, she was the one who was meant to be in this coven, right? We know from Lilia's vision, she was supposed to be there regardless. But anyhow, interesting. The other witches are both scared and intrigued by her as they should be. And they immediately figure out that her and Agatha have beef. And as we heard Lilia say, at this point, it's probably a good thing because especially Jen and, and Lilia, they're very, they're still very weary of Agatha as they should be because they're like, we know this witch is very 
shysty and we're waiting for her to do something to us. So if we've got somebody who is anti-Agatha to help us, that's good. That's a good thing. But they really don't know that Rio's actually crazy. So <laughs> also that I think it was between choosing between Agatha and these ladies, you know, she, Rio's picking Agatha. But anyway, so interestingly, we see that, uh, I think the interesting thing about Rio that we, we learn is that while they're in the trial in the cabin, Agatha exposes the fact that Rio is not their angel of mercy that they might think she might be when she says that, oh, oh, she, what did she say to Agatha? Once you get your powers back, you're going to basically dust these witches, steal their powers and dust these witches. And Rio's like, and then she said, was it Rio who said it? One of them was like, and then you get your bodies. So what does that mean exactly? Right, and we saw that when Rio introduced herself, she was able to turn on this demonic voice to say she was the green witch. So I'm very curious as to what green power means. What does that mean? Because typically earth is associated with really nice things, right? Earth is like regenerative. It's usually about healing. It's about root power, you know, good stuff. But I'm not getting that from Rio. You know, she's, she's about, she says her heart's black. She's wearing a lot of black. And she has a demonic voice. Like I just, mm, I'm thinking she's not, green means something different in this witch world. So I'm curious as to what her powers actually are. And what does she mean by bodies? What do you need bodies for? Do you jump bodies? Do you feed on bodies? But I'm thinking it has to be, because re remember Agatha said in episode two? Two, yes. She said, no, it was one, episode one, where she said that, because remember, um, Rio said, blast me, or she, well, Rio said, uh, why don't you steal my power? And Agatha said, that would kill me. So whatever she does, it's not good, is my point. Whatever her power is, it seems like it's fatal to other witches in some way, I'm assuming. So I'm just wondering if it's going to be, if it's fatal to Agatha, who's a fellow witch, I maybe have a theory that maybe Rio does have to jump bodies every so often because maybe it's rotting her like maybe her own power like rots her own body away and then she's got to jump into another one to keep alive i don't know this is just me purely speculating but what does she need bodies for that's the big question that was a big reveal for you know they didn't drop that for no reason so anyway those are interesting tidbits we've got to marinate on and then we saw that the teen got hit you know he got attacked during this ritual or during this trial i should say and I knew as soon as I saw the bro broken glass, I'm like, he probably got hit. He probably got cut with something. And he did. But of course, no one noticed until after everything was said and done. Agatha was clearly very worried the second she saw that he was hurt. Basically knocked everyone out of the way to make sure he was okay. And it was her primary concern to get him healed. And we've seen like Agatha has been very flippant, very, you know, disconnected, very nonchalant this entire time. This is the first time we saw her visibly and thoroughly shaken was at the idea that the teen was not going to make it. And so thankfully we see that Jen was able to heal him with magic because Rio could do it. As we said, we know that Rio can heal with her saliva. I don't know. I'm assuming it's part of her magic, but Agatha told her not to. So this is why I'm wondering if there's a negative side effect to Rio's power maybe? Like maybe it doesn't affect witches as much because they're already immortal, but it would do something detrimental to humans. I don't know. But she told Rio not to do it. Or maybe she didn't want to owe Rio. I don't know. But it's weird that she wouldn't let Rio do it when she knows he's got, she's got a quick way to heal him. But anyways, Jen did it. So kudos to Jen. And he was healed. And we see that Agatha literally did not leave his side until he woke up. So that's a very mom thing to do, right? Moms cannot focus on anything until their babies are okay. And like I said, we have not seen Agatha be this caring at all since this whole thing started, or even in WandaVision, this was not her. So she clearly has affection for the teen. She feels fiercely protective of him. And that's when I think I made it very clear. She must think it's possible that that's her son. And he wakes up and, you know, she's actually kind of, you know, she's being soft and he picks up on the fact that she clearly cared about whether or not he died. And then... He asks her about her son and we see immediately that the emotions close off, right? The wall comes back, the, the mask comes back on and she basically walks away from him. And so I, yeah, whatever happened there, I still maintain my theory that it was not her. I don't think she willingly gave her son up for the dark hold. I think it was a price she didn't realize she'd had to pay. I honestly think it was something like that. 
And I think if she could go back and change it, she absolutely would. But anyways, uh, I get a lot of regret is my point. So anyhow, um, then we see that uh, all the witches are talking about their battle scars and Agatha, you know, of course she picks a very mild one because, you know, she don't like to talk about her past too much. And then Rio kind of addresses the elephant in the room and says that she hurt somebody because it was her job. And she, every time she said there was somebody that I knew and I had to hurt them and she kept looking like very deliberately at Agatha. So if nobody, if any of those witches didn't pick up that it was Agatha, they are, they are willfully obtuse. But anyway, and she says that that person, their existence is her scar, right? Very poetic language. And so kind of going between her saying that and then saying that her heart bleeds for Agatha, I'm picking up from this that Rio had to do something that ended up being a betrayal to Agatha and because she, potentially she had no choice because the way she said it, because it was my job. So what does that mean? Like, I don't know. There's, there's definitely more to unpack there, but it feels like Rio felt obligated to do whatever she did. And it was a betrayal of some kind to Agatha and Agatha took it pretty hard. And I guess Rio felt like Agatha should have forgiven her because she maybe had no choice. But Agatha didn't and instead like kind of left her. And now there's just been this unspoken angst there where they don't hate each other, but they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Their relationship is very weird. They're definitely making it weird. They've definitely confirmed in this episode it was a romantic connection, but I feel like that was pretty evident from episode one. But I know some people were back and forth on it. Pretty clear now it was definitely more than just friends. Um, and Agatha looked like she was kind of, I guess you could say, um, relenting a little bit. But then we see that Rio tells her he's not your son. And I do think she genuinely said that because she knew that Agatha was getting more and more attached to him. Now, was that the truth? That's another question. Do I think Rio would lie about it? I don't think so, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Like I said, without knowing that the history of their relationship, I can't make enough speculations now to know whether or not Rio genuinely does care about Agatha, genuinely wants to keep something or rekindle something with her, or if she really is just still very angry and just wants revenge and she's just finding a way to get through to Agatha to do it. I mean, if there's any way to hurt Agatha badly at this point, it's now with this, right? Because this whole situation with the teen has proven two things. One, that she was you know, didn't look like she cared about anything until this teen came along and now she's super protective of him and clearly upset about the idea of losing him. And two, that what happened with her son is still an open wound for her. Despite, like, we don't know how long ago it happened, but it, I don't think it was recent. So yeah, those are two things that someone who really wants to hurt Agatha would love to know. So at this point, the, the jury's still out for me on Rio. I really don't know she gives very chaotic vibes, so I can't pick up really on what's going on, how much is authentic, how much is a ploy. I do think she still cares about Agatha. I think there are still feelings there, but is it strong enough for her to not want to get revenge or whoever made her hurt Agatha in the past, whoever gave her the job of doing it, how do we know they're not? she's still not working for them, right? If those strings are being pulled whenever this happened between the two of them before, those strings could still be being pulled. So lots of questions. Like I said, their, their connection is very confusing, but there's a story and they're not giving it, a, they're giving us pieces. They're, they're breadcrumbing the story to us, which I'm fine with because there's a lot going on overall with the story, but it's definitely going to come to a head, I think. Whenever it gets to the trial, I guess when we get to, my guess is there was speculation from people in the comments saying that they don't think that Agatha walked the road the first time. They think that she lied about walking the road. And that's very possible that she didn't and that she, the only people maybe who could have, you know, proved that she didn't were maybe her coven. Like maybe that's why she dusted them in her, in that flashback we saw in WandaVision. I don't know. I think it's true that, but I think it's possible that she didn't do it, but I also think it's possible she did, but she betrayed every single person on the way. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think there's, it's, or she was pulled through kind of like the team was, something like that. So I don't know. I think either, either of those could be true because she doesn't seem completely unknowledgeable, but there's also many times when they very purposefully ask Agatha things about the road and she takes a little too long to answer the question. So yeah, it definitely gives, did you lie? Did you lie, Agatha? So anyways, um, my theory, as I said before, though, is that if we get now that she's doing the road for real, whether it's her first time or not, the, there's going to be a trial for her, right? So I figure we're going to find out the truth about what's, what happened between her and Rhea. Well, 
I feel like we're gonna find out what happened between her and Rio in Rio's trial. When Rio gets to hers, we're gonna get the background on her and Agatha. I feel like that's, I just don't see how it couldn't be. And then when we get Agatha's trial, which I feel like is gonna be very close to the end of the season, that's when we're gonna get the history of what happened with her getting the dark hold and her son. Like what was the real truth, you know, cause yeah, it seems to be a bit either a secret or blurry. <laughs> I'm wondering if Agatha even remembers, but ooh, speaking of things she can't remember, when the teen asked her, did you put the sigil on me? And she said, I, first she said no, then she says, I don't know, because the way sigils work is that even the caster, it works on the caster as well. So she would not remember putting the sigil on him and then she wouldn't be able to see through the sigil. And she said that sigils are not broken, they're destroyed when they're no longer useful. So that I think is the other reason Agatha is so scared for him. It's because she realizes that someone is using him at the moment with this sigil, but if they no longer think the sigil is necessary, it sounds like there's no separating the sigil from Teen without killing him. That's what I'm picking up. So I'm thinking that's not completely impossible. There's gotta be another way, but that's what she believes at the moment. So it definitely adds another layer to what's going on here. And again, if Agatha did it, would she do that? And why would she do it? If the theory that people have is that Teen is Wanda's son, Wanda would have put a sigil. I could see Wanda putting a sigil on him just to protect him from Agatha or anyone like her. But she had Agatha in that spell, so she would have, no, no, she wouldn't have. She wouldn't have had time to do it. So would she have, yeah, maybe Agatha did. Maybe Agatha got to, got to, because people speculate that it's, uh, that it's Wanda's son, Billy. So if she got to Billy at some point and saw that he had magical ability, she might have put the sigil on him and possibly even bound him. Hmm. Just to protect him. Because yeah, the, the child of Wanda, the reality witch, that would be a secret that Agatha would definitely want to keep. Hmm. Hmm. I might be onto something here. But anyways, we're going to have to see. I'm definitely going down speculation road here. But yeah, lots of, lots of really big hints, lots of really big Easter eggs dropped in this episode for us. We'll have to see whether or not all these seeds actually get to uh, take root in this season. We may not follow all of these, but I feel like the big things we're definitely going to get is what happened between Agatha and Rio, who the teen is. I hope we get to find out who the teen is. If we don't, then we, we know we're getting a season two. And then... Finally, I guess who put the sigil there and why because I think that's a really important thing for us to know So yeah, another great episode though guys like even though the trial was really the shorter part of the episode I think all the other stuff they gave us about the overall story was really the meat and potatoes of it And I enjoyed that a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one